Welcome to the Pet Loss Companion. I'm Ken Dolan Del Vecchio, and I'm here with my friend and co author and colleague, Nancy Saxton Lopez. And this is a broadcast that we do live on Facebook and YouTube every Thursday at six o'clock Eastern Time. And it's an opportunity for us to bring the information that we shared through our book, The Pet Loss Companion Healing Advice from Family Therapists who lead pet loss group with a broader audience. And also it's gone way beyond that because we've been able to have a lot of dialogue with participants or listeners or viewers. And so we really appreciate the interaction that we have with you. And we encourage you to write to us and to share your stories and, and your questions and your recommendation for future topics. You can reach me at Ken DDV at gmail.com. And you can reach Nancy at N Saxton Lopez at csmpc.com. That's N S A X T O N L O P E Z at csmpc.com. And I have a confession to make. Somebody sent us a very nice note through the Pet Loss Companion website. It went into my spam. I put it in my inbox. I read it. It was from somebody in New Zealand about their beloved Rottweiler, I encourage you to please send it again just directly to my email because I messed up and deleted it forever before I could respond to you. And we do make every effort to respond to every single note that we get. Right. So I apologize for that. We'd like you to know that this program is a friend of Dakin Humane Society in Springfield, Massachusetts. Dakin is a 501c3 community-based animal welfare organization that provides shelter and medical care and spay neuter services and behavioral rehab for more than 20,000 animals and people each year. They're very focused on the, the human animal bond. Since its opening in 1969, Dakin has become one of the most recognized nonprofit organizations in central Massachusetts and a national leader in animal welfare. You can learn more about Dakin and make a donation at dakinhumane.org. That's D A K I N H U M A N E.org. You can also support our program if you go to the description. You will see a link where you can subscribe and, and contribute to the work that Nancy and I are doing. So, Nancy, want to get us started? Yes. So, we're going to talk tonight about inspiration that we get from our beloved pets. And there is a particular um, um, set of emails that we received about Freddie, mm -hmm. who was the beloved dog of Grant and Rudy. And, you know, it was a, a story, a wonderful story, a heartbreaking story, of course, when Grant wrote because they were devastated over the loss of Freddie. Um, little Freddie had uh, heart disease and two cancers. I think he had been rescued and there was a history there. Um, they even moved the residents to be a, more accommodating to Freddie and his journey with illness so that it was calmer and, and, and a better environment for him. Um, but after, you know, 13, 14 years, his little body just you know, couldn't, couldn't move, couldn't go anywhere at, at all with finally uh, the cancer and the heart disease taking over. Um, so and there were differences. There were there were there were some differences in, in how Rudy grieves and and Grant grieves. There were some questions. Um, Grant wondered where little Freddie was after he died. Um, there was always, of course, he had some guilt, even though they went they did so much for this little oh, boy. Above and beyond, yeah. Um, and so I'm going to read. Um, his obituary that Grant and Rudy sent. And this is for Freddie Clouser Menzies. And he, I think, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he was born in 2009 and he died in 2021. Um, he was rescued from a puppy mill in the British Columbia. So he, these folks are Canadian. Uh, the BC interior in summer of 2010 by the BCSPCA, 
Freddie, a one-year-old Spitz, found a home with his dads in Sydney shortly after. They worked for years to help him overcome his early trauma. They took him to places like Yosemite, no, yes, did I say that right? Yep, Uh, National Park, Crater Lake, the Oregon coast, San Francisco, as well as his beloved Stanley Park. He met and was adored by people renowned in the arts, politics, and conservation, expanding to a worldwide fan club. <laughs> Locally, he was selected by Bill Cairns for his book, The Dogs of Sydney by the Sea, and became a favorite of businesses up and down Beacon Avenue. Freddie's courage in learning how to live without fear inspired one of his dads to write books about other brave animals, including A Life of Muggins, the famed fundraising spits of World War I Victoria. Freddie himself helped raise funds for the BCSPCA and other animal welfare charities. Diagnosed with an aggressive cancer in summer of 2020, Freddie aced surgery and chemotherapy, amazing his oncologist. When diagnosed this summer with lymphoma, he fought bravely and was able to enjoy to the full living in Sydney again. Freddie passed on October 25th, 2021, in the arms of his dads, who say, in the words of Emily Dickinson, I see him in the star and meet his sweet velocity and everything that flies. It was a beautiful tribute obituary. It is. And they also memorialized him. I say, I should say Grant memorialized him in an article. So Grant is a writer and he writes regularly for the Literary Review of Canada. And I linked his article, which is called My Brave Companion. And It's really the inspiration for this conversation that we're having because Grant is somebody who has written about suffragettes, about courageous women, Mm -hmm. but living with Freddie, who was the product of a a home where there was, uh, it was basically a place where a backyard breeder supplied for a puppy mill and was also a home, the home was one in which there was, it was like a hoarder's residence. And so Freddie lived in a very traumatic circumstance when he was tiny and Grant and Rudy spent all of Freddie's life working to help him be less fearful, more accepting of love understanding that he that the food that was provided for him was for him alone for him. and and they had great success in that regard because he was able to be loving which is of course an amazing tribute to Grant and Rudy and because that requires a, an outrageous degree of patience and care. and love and care mm-hmm. and so the article talks about, and I'm summarizing here in my own words, talks about how animals who are often in the most extreme circumstances that our inhuman behavior toward each other, that they are in war, that they're in circumstances where they are injured because they're in combat. And yet, they do things that are loving. They do things that are fulfilling their mission. And it was just really powerful. And, and it's, a, it's, it's not a long article, but it will make a mark on you. So we recommend that, that you read it. And we're inspired to ask you, how are your, your relationships with your animal companions inspiring you? How are they changing your life? How are they helping you build strength? And it may very well be that this takes a bit of time after a loss Mm -hmm. to become clearer, to settle. Right. Because it's not, it's not just the, the day to day, but it's the story that they leave you with. It's the story of their lives that very often will help us to, to grow and to find strength. And I was telling Nancy before we got started that my little Abigail who died in August 
was incredibly empathic. <laughs> when anybody in our family was was sad or just being very quiet, she would come to them. And if they were sitting on the couch where she sat, she would put her little paw. <laughs> she was a very small chihuahua. She would put her paw very tentatively on your leg and look at you like, "Can Are you could, okay? you use, could you use some support? <laughs> and it just is something that my husband, Tim, and I will always remember and always hold dear because she was such a, just such a radiant source of love and empathy. <laughs> of course. Well, that's part of the inspiration for us is they allow us to live in a healthier, more content life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with gratitude, right? Yep. Yep. And, and gratitude uh, is always so important for us, you know, because we don't really, we don't really think certain people or situations or whatever that might be that make our lives better. And animals certainly do that. Sure. Gra gratitude, the way I see it, is the, is the most important emotion. It's the most mm -hmm. healing emotion. It's the emotion that helps us to feel whole and well. And I just, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, my, my, I talk about her all the time now, my little Hildy, who is going to be seven months old next week. I just, I'm so grateful for her. I pick her up and she's short haired. So she's quite warm. And that's so comforting in our winter. <laughs> I just, I just, it's just amazing. And, you know, just going for a walk with her is so healing and soothing when, when you are focused on all the challenges of the moment. And there are always some, right? There's always something in life that's challenging us. That's, that's uh, not exactly what we'd want it to be. <laughs> that's right. Well, and look, you're right. How, how calm are we when we're walking our dogs mm -hmm. or how happy are we when we're playing with our cats? Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. How exhilarated are we when we're riding a horse or horse? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, there's so many one, and you have to live in the moment. That's yep. this moment to moment. Animals don't do it any other way. They yep. don't think about the past. They don't think about the future. They are in that moment. They live life to the fullest. Yep. Yep. Years years ago, my ex wife and I had a horse named Oh Henry. You met you met Henry. I met Henry. <laughs> He and he big. was he was big and he could be really fast. And I remember one day we were galloping, not cantering, we were galloping around a pasture. And in the rhythm, I it was such a spiritual moment. I yeah. felt like I felt something eternal in that moment because there's something so powerful about being in partnership with our animal companions and and particularly when you you I just knew he was having a joyful time as well. And so, yeah, I mean, our animals teach us so much. And, and that's the thing that we, we want to hold on to mm -hmm. in the long term. We'll find a way, most of us, to hold on to the gifts that they and gave there, us. And there are a lot of gifts. And, you know, it's interesting because you and I were talking before, too, about people in the group that came in and were inspired after a loss, one woman became an EMT. You know, that's what, her, that's what she wanted to do to give back in the, in the memory of mm -hmm. her animal. You know, mm -hmm. people would donate money. People would volunteer. They would mm -hmm. volunteer not only with, with animal organizations, but people organizations. Yep. I mean, yep. right up the road here um, in Burton County in New Jersey is Pony Power, and they use horses with children, you know, oh, yeah, have yeah. Different, different disabilities. And, you know, it's such a wonderful program because they learn about the animals and also, you know, they learn different things as they move around, you know, the corral. Um, and it's just th that connection for them is, is wonderful. Yeah. Well, my, my ex Lynn did, was trained as a, an equine assisted therapy professional. And she learned all about how horses, well, we knew this from our yeah, home right. experience, horses are incredibly attuned to how we're doing emotionally. 
and they are they are a bellwether for how a person is feeling and how easy or hard it is to be close to that person. They're actually used a lot in leadership training. Oh, uh, yeah. they're, they're, yes, they're, they're employed for helping leaders to understand their impact on others. And so there's just so much that animals can teach us and inspire in so many ways that they can inspire us. Exactly. And that's really important to know, not only for what we get, and Boog, by the way, Boogie and Ellie are here and they're, they may be <laughs> snoring. So at some point, so anyway, um, but they, te they, they teach us things, but they also give us things like we had talked about, right? Mm -hmm. More, more people become more social. They become more involved in, in the, in the present. They, they, they're healthier because they have to go out to do things. For their mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it covers so many things of health that that people need but it also inspires us to do other things like we just said right absolutely you know, and get involved more involved in and in helping others yeah and 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 i we we want to challenge people in a sense in a very gentle way to think about what are the gifts of inspiration that you received from your pet who is no longer here, from your pets who are no longer here. What what did what did they leave you with? What what did they teach you? How did they inspire you? Because if we can think about those things, we can begin to or perhaps deepen the ways that we hold their memory yes. and and mm -hmm. and experience even more gratitude. Because it's a very hard thing in the first throes of grief to feel anything but pain. Right. But as we write about in, in the book, uh, event, in our book, The Pet Loss Companion, eventually the pain of grief in most cases becomes at least to some extent gratitude for having known this this yeah, friend, yeah, this dear beautiful. friend. Beautiful. You know, it was interesting. And <clears throat> this is a story about the group. Um, my first adult dog, Tashi, uh, my first pug, um, was, you know, one of the, my first heart dog. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. she, she went through a lot of life with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, and when she died, obviously it was tr very traumatic. She she developed pancreatitis, and um, it's almost like I went to a to a to a psychic, and he said, "No, she she needed to go at that time because she got into the garbage, and she had never gotten into the garbage, and she ate, and I'd made chicken soup, and she ate all the fat that was oh in the wow, garbage. and so I mean, obviously devastating. We weren't able to be with her when she died. She died forty five minutes away." And so, and we went through a whole other thing, which I can't, but the Long Island Pet Memorial Park that was not. But that was when I decided to do a group, right? So I, mm -hmm. I, was, I did a conference at the Delta Society and I knew St. Hubert's at the time, you know, down in Morris County. And I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do this. You know, I think it's really important. I didn't know if there was a group in the, in the state at the time. And I met someone through the Delta conference and she was an, she was Carolyn. She was an Carolyn, yeah. minister mm -hmm. and I was the clinician and we approached Ed Sayers at, at St. Hubert's at the same time. And he said, great. We, you know, this is wonderful. We can That's do this for you. Right. Mm -hmm. The date we picked because it just happened to be spring and it happened to be, we wanted a Tuesday was the day one year later that Tashi had died. And we, now I didn't, we didn't, I didn't think of that when we figured, let's do a Tuesday. We'll do the first, first Tuesday of the month. Right. And that was, and I knew then that that was exactly what I needed to do. And yes. that group was for her every time for 30 years. Right. For her. The yeah. ones came along. But you know, it was, that was what I did. Yeah. You know? Well, you, you're, you're talking to some extent, it seems to me about this, the reality that grief and loss changes us mm -hmm. and and we never we, you know some people f have this mythology that we're going to get better that we're going to come back to 
where we started before the loss and we, we don't. We come to a place that is more complicated, that is richer in many, many cases. We have new wisdom and oftentimes we're we're more focused on the things that are going to carry us forward in life, like you're describing. I mean, that became that became a real centerpiece of the clinical work that you do. Right. And very close to your heart for all of these decades now. Mm -hmm. And you can, in some, to some extent, you can say that's a gift from this. It was a gift from her. It was just kismet. It was weird. It was just Mm -hmm. that day. And I'm like, oh my God, that, Mm -hmm. that meant meant something, right? I Mm -hmm. mean, that she, she was saying, yeah, this is what we're going to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you're, yes, you're right. Your life completely changes, even though you can move forward over a period of time. Your experience deepens your character. Yep, and we don't ever forget them. They're close at hand. We don't need to forget them. We can cherish the memory and and move forward in a way that's richer. Is the way I think about it. Yeah. So all of our all of our babies that have gone um, and have left us have have meant something to us. And I think we're kind of right. It would be really important for people to write in and say, "This is what this is what I decided to do," or "This is what I found out," or "This is what was important to me after the loss of you know a very important beloved pet." Yeah. Um, yeah. So well, we. I'm sorry. No, you go. No. It's fine. I was going to, I was going to say, do we want to move to the, the epitaphs that we have? Oh my goodness. All right. So when I was doing, well, first of all, when I was doing a little bit, you know, of reading about inspiration today, um, I, I came across in an article, um, th- these, these two sentences, which I, I, they were very interesting to me. One is dog as my doctor and cat as my nurse. So that connection of, of healing, right? For us, yeah. animals yeah. can heal us, yep. you know, in different ways. Yep. And that created me to start to think about, okay, I remember you know, going to Abbey. Abbey Glen is a, a pet cemetery and crematory in Sussex County in New Jersey. And we've used Abby Glenn every time that one of our children, our babies have died. Yep. And when when uh, Rosie died in 2020, we went, it was it was summer. So we went up, you know, we were able to, to have a um, service for her. And all of a sudden I realized that there were, they, Abby Glenn was now very horses, right? Because, you know, for a long time, I don't know if they did, but, the, and usually there are plaques of all the all, all who have died on the ground. These were tombstones. I mean, these were mm. very large tombstones. And so I decided to walk around, and I wanted to um, I wanted to to see what the epitaphs were, mm-hmm. which blew me away. I, I the, the amount of of emotional energy that went into, you know, talking about their beloved horses. Um, And so the first um, was for Peppermint Patty. And it's, she says, for over 20 years, I needed her. She was always there, a beloved friend and companion. And there's pictures, all Mm -hmm. of these, all of these have little horse pictures, right? They're, they're pictures on the stone. Yeah. They're like bronze or something like that. Yeah, they're they're actual pictures. Wow. So it's really it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um the second one is Nikki. Um and she was she was born in nineteen eighty and and she was a jumper because there there are pictures of her jumping, you know. Um she was born in in nineteen eighty one and she died in nineteen ninety-nine. And the saying was when I couldn't fly, you gave me wings. And forever in my thoughts, right? Yeah. But the last one was the one that I, I may have a hard time getting through <laughs> because it was just so outrageous. Um, hold on a minute so I can, I can, um, okay. So this one is Teddy. 
And um, he was born in 1970, uh, and he died in 1999. And there's a beautiful couple. So he was 20, 29 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my beloved soulmate, so gentle and forgiving, you healed my troubled soul and transport, transformed my life with your love. Grace joyfully, my darling, until our souls are reunited as one forever beyond eternity. So beautiful. So beautiful. So, Nancy, I, I think we we'll, we can end there for today. Okay. And just thank you for reading those. I know it was very I know it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to read those. But I'm glad because but that's what that's how we feel about our relationships with our beloved animals, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were beautiful um, or are beautiful. So, but again, we'd really like people to to write in about what they've learned and how their animals and the relationship with their animals has inspired them. Yep. Has helped them, has given them something as gifts. Yep. So again, it was nice talking with you as always and uh, look forward to our next conversation. Of course. Take care, everyone. Take care.